Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, we're going to get back to the Cody videos uh, this weekend, but there was a more pressing matter I wanted to talk about today, and that is Raspberry Pi and why I might be done with them. So let's go ahead and talk about what's going on. Well, you know, of course, there's a chip shortage, and Raspberry Pi has been very hard to find. Well, I have found a company that is selling them, and so I bought one, and I got a Raspberry Pi, and the problem is, guess what? It can't boot any of the software that I have. Almost none. We'll get into that. So what did they do? Well, they very silently released the new version. This is the Raspberry Pi Revision 1.5. Raspberry Pi 4B Revision 1.5. There was a change in the 1.5 that broke all back compatibility with the old way of doing booting in version 1.4. Now, for clarity, 1.4 and before could boot the Raspberry Pis on a variety of different protocols. The Raspberry Pi 4B 1.5, which is still a Raspberry Pi 4B, cannot boot most old hardware people have. I software, I should say. You try and boot it up, and you get this wonderful screen that says, newer software is needed for this board. This board needs newer software. I don't know, this is what it looks like, and it's annoying as hell. Now, what are people talking about? Well, there's a few people that have gotten their hands on version 1.5 boards, so there's a little bit of buzz, but not a whole lot. Most people still don't know exactly what's going on. A lot of software is broken. Cody, if you're using LibreElect, should be working correctly with the newer way of doing boots, and so it should work. Open Source Media Center is not. If you're trying to build out Cody and you've just gotten your hands on Raspberry Pi, go with LibreElect, not with Open Source Media Center, because you will probably not be able to boot it on that. I encountered a lot of other specialty software that I have no idea what it is, all built on Raspberry Pi 4B, failing to boot. Now, the biggest thing people say is, well, go in and use Raspberry Pi OS and do a apt um, full-upgrade, which will upgrade the firmware as well. The problem is, that doesn't work on the new Raspberry Pi. It doesn't. It does not solve the problem. So, let's explain what's going on. The older method that Raspberry Pi was doing their installs was... You had a recovery partition, and then you had an extended partition, and within that extended partition, you had a boot, excuse me, you had a settings, then a boot, then a root. The newer revision 1.5 cannot read a Raspberry, 5, uh, Raspberry uh, Pi 4B. They cannot read that boot sector anymore. The newer method is boot and root. They're getting rid of the extended partition. The problem is, is the 1.4 and before could boot off of both methodologies. The Vision 1.5 can only boot off of the newer one. So, in my testing, you guys remember my Manjaro video where I do my work computer off of Manjaro? That Manjaro works on, the, on all of the Raspberry Pi 4s that I have. That Manjaro build works just fine because it uses the boot and root methodology. But my brand new Raspberry Pi OS 64 will not boot on the 1.5. The reason is I install that using an older version of Noobs. Noobs, though, contributes to the bootloader in formatting the partitions. That seems to be the problem. Why did I use an older Noobs? Very simple. Raspberry Pi made it very hard to find the new version of Noobs. You can find it. It's on their GitHub repository. But they made the best way of installing Raspberry Pi software extraordinarily hard to find. That's the first advice to Raspberry Pi Foundation to possibly get me to um, reconsider using you again in the future. Put Noobs back on the website. There's no reason it shouldn't be there. One install allows you to choose every other download I could possibly install, including uh, your, um, your various miscellaneous uh, utilities and boot utilities and things like that. Now, here's the next problem, though, that's causing Raspberry Pi issues. We'll get more into, into the boot sectors in a moment. 
This is my brand new Raspberry Pi that I have to reflash the entirety of my Debian 64 Pi OS because the bootloaders don't work. Enter the second problem, their servers keep failing. I think they're still thinking that they're a small little niche group which a very small following. They're not. Every single time I try to go over to raspberrypi.com slash software and try and download something, it fails. You can have to wait for it to time out and fail, which is taking about five minutes, and then you have to hit the button, and then after about an hour or so, you can possibly get the coupled gigabyte download. This has been trying to install their basic operating system for two hours, and it's been stuck at 54% for now 10 minutes. It got online, it was able to download 200 megabytes before the download server crashed, and now it's waiting 10 minutes for a timeout. This thing will possibly, maybe, be ready to use by dinner. That is called a horrible user experience. Now, why is all this important? <clears throat> Well, in my van here, I have several Raspberry Pis literally built into the walls. This is a Raspberry Pi that I use for work. It's a Raspberry Pi 4, 8 gigabyte. This one is Raspberry Pi 2, I think 2 gigabyte, I think. That's a Kodi server. And then inside my computer cabinet here, which you won't be able to see back there, but back there there's two Raspberry Pi 4 four gigabytes. One of those is a NAS file server and media server, allowing me to stream all my movies, music, and everything within my network. And the other one is a PHP server that I use for offline website design and development and other tasks that I would need a web server for. The thing is, is that I want to go in and have a, a pile of extra raspberry, not a pile, like one or two extra raspberry pies in the van with me. So when I'm out in the middle of a desert in Arizona and a raspberry pie happens to go bad because sometimes hardware goes bad, I can simply swap it out for another one. I have backups of all my SD cards. I have backups of uh, you know, just all the, the files and things that I need. But if the hardware goes bad, I need to be able to drop the new hardware in there. And then I need to be able to um, throw in the new SD card and have the thing boot. The problem is, we're talking Raspberry Pi 4 to Raspberry Pi 4 no longer properly boots. That's called stupid. Now, I can understand Raspberry Pi 2, Raspberry Pi 3, sure, you need different methodology. But if I have a Raspberry Pi 4, and I get another Raspberry Pi 4... All of the hardware uh, should accept all of the software. It doesn't. They have a serious failure here. So two primary failures, and these are major for Raspberry Pi. The first of these failures is that their Raspberry Pi 4 revision 1.5 is not back compatible with everything that can boot on a 1.4 and before. Okay, that's number one. Number two, their download server needs some serious help. This is a bad user experience. You realize when you buy a new Raspberry Pi, more often than not, you get a version of Noobs. This is Noobs. Now, this is the new version of Noobs. Uh, uh, just downloaded. It's just released in, in January. Why is that brand new version of Noobs not on their website for download? I have no earthly idea, but it should be. But I downloaded it, I put it on here, and I'm all excited. I'm like, yay, I'm going to install Raspberry Pi OS on my brand new Raspberry Pi. Two hours later, it's stuck at 54%. Bad user experience. So I am going to start investigating other boards. I am sick of this company that keeps on failing at things that they should not be failing at. If you have ideas for other boards I can have a look at that can do servers, um, uh, PHP servers, web servers, media servers, file exchange servers, Kodi builds, all these types of things, I'd be interested in seeing the other boards I might want to start investigating now. As for Raspberry Pi, three things, guys. Number one, release firmware immediately and let everybody know immediately revision 1.5 will not work with a lot of software and fix that. Number two, put noobs back on your download page so people can find it because it's the best way to install Raspberry Pi software. Number three, fix your download server.
Now, in my investigation as to what the problem was with all this setup here, it turns out I found piles and piles of other software that I don't know exactly what it is for Raspberry Pi 5 4 Bs, and nobody can figure out what's going on because Raspberry Pi Foundation released this revision without alerting anybody to it. Oh, you see this little bleepy back there? That little bleepy back there means it's finally downloading the next 100 megabytes. We might see this guy jump back up. Look at that. It shot up to 5.6 or 56%. Yeah, baby. Um, it's, it looks like it's stuck again. So I'm going to look at 56% now for the next several minutes. I don't know. But anyway, guys, there's my experience. Um, it's, there is no excuse for this type of nonsense. The, the found, the Pi Foundation needs to not ever do this again and fix some of these things. Because frankly, if I have to rebuild all of my, uh, information, I'm going to rebuild it with somebody who's you know, sane and not breaking everything from within the model to within the model. This is crazy. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know other boards I should be looking at in the comments down below. I'll go ahead and investigate those and see, hey, can I do fun stuff? Maybe I'll find something better than Raspberry Pis. I don't know. If somebody from the Pi Foundation is watching this, um, guys, fix your stuff. There's no reason I'd be rebuilding my brand new Debian uh, or Raspberry Pi OS 64 for the brand new revision. I just put the thing on this card a couple months ago. Fix it. That's all I have to say. Fix it. Anyway, with that, guys, thanks for watching. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.